Hey guys, let's walk you through the steps of creating the broomstick block. Um, if you're following along on the pattern, the broomstick block starts on page seven. Um, I have cut out all the pieces um, that I need to, and I am ready to go. So I'm gonna walk you through first creating these little flying geese blocks, cause these are small pieces. And I know, oh, let's get those where you guys can see them. These are small pieces, and I know that can be intimidating when you're first starting uh, quilting, so let's work on one of these at a time. Um, you are going to need some sort of marking pen and then a ruler. And I will show you actually my trick for this afterwards because I don't mark mine anymore when I make flying geese. I have a little trick I'll show you on my sewing machine. But for now, especially if you're new, you're going to want to go ahead and mark this. So you're going to draw a line diagonally on the wrong side of your fabric. Oh, you can see mine's a little off. That's one of my first tips when you do this. you got to make sure you get this right. Like this. So you've got that marked. And you're going to take it and you're going to place it right on top of your gray piece so that it's going that direction. I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and I'm going to stitch along that line. I wanted to share with you my tip for um, sewing flying geese, half score triangles, um, any other kind of things that require um, a precise quarter inch measurement. I have this, this is seam tape from Cluck Cluck Sew from Allison. Um, I'll link it up. And it is a piece of tape that has quarter inch measurements on the side of each center. So it's going to take you a little bit to set it up the first time, but once you get it, it's, you can leave it in place. Um, it comes with a whole roll, so there's plenty if you mess up. You just want to make sure that you set it up so that the center of your needle is lined up with the center of that red line. Now, I have marked this piece, so I don't need to use this, but I think it's a good way to show you how the seam tape works. So we're going to come in and I'm going to start sewing at one corner and move to the other corner of my block. And you can see how the seam tape works because as long as I keep this line lined up with this line, then I know that I'm spot on where I need to be. I just stitched this, trimmed it, and trimmed it. And then I pressed it. When I press it, I come in, I put my iron on it first, flat, and then I take my fingers and I very carefully with my fingers fold it open, get it like I want, and then put the iron on it again, straight up, straight down. Um, I also think it's very helpful when you're working with smaller pieces of fabric like this to use some spray starch. I just use um, bottled spray starch that I got at the store. Um, I know there are a lot of different kinds of spray starch that people prefer, that, especially for quilting. I just haven't tried those yet. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this other piece and I'm going to mark it again. And then I'm going to place it on top of the piece I already stitched. And I'm going to stitch this again from here all the way up to here. I've sewn both of my flying geese blocks according to the pattern directions and I've stitched it to my broom pattern piece according to the pattern directions. Now I'm going to go ahead and as it states on page 7 of the pattern um, or step 2 of the broom block if your pattern has a different numbering, you're going to come in and you're going to find the center of the block um, which I know is right at two and a quarter inches. So I've lined my block up on my cutting mat best I can and I've marked two and a quarter inches. And then I'm gonna come three quarters of an inch out on both sides. Like I said, this is all noted on the pattern and I'm gonna place a mark. Now that I have those two marks placed, I'm going to put my, I'm going to make sure this stays straight on my cutting mat. I'm going to put my ruler so that the edge of it is at the edge of the bottom of the broom and the top of it, see it just moved. I'm going to, like, I'm going to make sure this doesn't move on me. And the top of it is going to be right at that mark that I made. And you're just going to cut it there. Now, if you want, um, 
so you know it's like absolutely completely symmetrical, you can go ahead and um, place this piece on this side and cut it again. So that way, if you were off a little bit, um, you know that your piece is the same on both sides. But it's totally up to you. I usually don't do this, but I thought I would show it to you as a tip in case you wanted to do that. All right, now I have my broom piece that I am ready to add my background fabric to. All right, again, this might be a technique that might be new to some of you. I have my two pieces of fabric here, and I'm gonna take my broom piece, and I am gonna layer it right on top of this background fabric piece. And I'm gonna make sure that this top edge of the broom is below because when it angles out, you need to make sure that it gets covered. Then I'm gonna come in on my sewing machine and I am gonna stitch a quarter inch seam allowance right here. I'm just gonna stitch on and off the piece even though this piece is not as big as the other piece. I've stitched that line. Come in and press, using your iron, press this up like that. Then take the other piece and do the same thing on the other side. Both pieces are now sewn on. The last thing you need to do is you need to cut this out into a rectangle. Um, the size is noted um, on the pattern. Um, it is going to be the same height. So I'm gonna put it on my cutting mat, make sure that my lines are straight. Cut that end off. Then I'm going to come in this direction and do the same thing on the other side. The last thing I need to do is cut it to the correct width. Uh, the correct width is noted on the pattern. Um, so I like to come in and using my, I get it lined up on my grid straight. And then I know this is the center where that middle of that flying geese is. And I line it up the best I can. And then I take the width of it. So I'm supposed to cut it to um, six and a half inches wide. So half of um, six and a half is three and a quarter. So I'm just gonna come out three and a quarter inches. One, two, three and a quarter inches on one side. Hopefully I'm doing this right since I'm recording it. Then I can just flip it around this way and cut it to six and a half. Okay. You're going to create the top of the broom handle piece the same way this is the ribbon fabric, this is broom fabric. Um, I have cut this wrong three times. So I'm going to recommend, unless you guys, unless it's just me or what, um, go in and mark this with a pen first before you cut it. I don't know what about this seems kind of counterintuitive to me, but just in case it is to you as well, this one you're coming from the corner to the one half inch mark. So now you're going to um, do the same thing again with your gray fabric that you did before, stitch this down, open it up, stitch the other side, open it up, and then trim it to the correct size that is noted in the pattern. I've created my broom, ribbon, and handle piece, and the rest of this block comes together, together very quickly. Um, you're just gonna sew um, these pieces together, sew them to these, and then add your top and bottom borders. I have one more fast tip to share with you. This piece has the seams plus, pressed towards the gray fabric or the background fabric. This piece is the top of the broom piece and it has the seams pressed in or towards the um, Halloween fabric. What that's gonna do is it's gonna let me nest these seams. So I'm gonna come in here and if you can see, let that focus, that those two seams sit right on top of each other on both sides. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna lock your seams together if you put those in there with a pin. So when you sew this across the top, you know that um, those are gonna be lined up correctly. 
here you can see that piece after it's sewn and you can see how nicely those two seams have lined up to create the room of the block.